Greetings, everybody. It is the Ash Heritor, and welcome back to Rogue Trader. Here we are in Mundus Valencius, our own capital system, if you can call it that, where we are uh, currently re-establishing our dynasty's control over the capital planet of Dargonus right here, which uh, has fallen under our control. There, Thus far, it's been a simple transition of power, where we've come in and basically taken over where the our predecessor... Theodora left off, and yeah, everything's gone well, surprisingly. I was expecting, you know, something to go wrong, and it damn well might still go wrong, because we still need to go to the administrative complex and restart all of the actions here, but it's certainly possible that it won't go wrong. We're going to bring the exact same party. This is my uh, away team for dealing with uh, stuff on the capital. Nobody that's going to cause any untoward problems for the common people, like the three down there. So, uh, we're gonna head to the Administratum Complex and uh, see how things are going. Check on things directly and, uh, you know, if some people need to be smacked around to get things working better, then uh, we'll do the smacking around as needed, or probably I'll have Abelard do the smacking around. And uh, if there's any sign of heresy, you know, we can have uh, Argenta do her thing. And Heinrichs, actually, yeah. We're, we have a good team for dealing with heretics. Alright, here we are. This is a, uh, a lovely looking place. What have we here? Turn after turn, the unceasing stream of petitioners pours in through the palace doors. The strong-willed wait patiently while the weak-willed try everything they can to get ahead of others. Of course, not too many petitioners today. Last week we had... Not too many petitioners today. Last week they had to put on an extra shift to cope with the crowds. I heard they've finished building another dozen levels on the east wing of the palace. When I joined the queue, uh, you mean Pui Wee, the plans hadn't... Damn it. The plans hadn't even been approved. Guardian of order, I treat every citizen as a suspect until they have proven they can be trusted. Ah, good old 40k. <laughs> My grandma came here every day, and every day she took a new ticket, but she never used any of them. I inherited one of those tickets. Got it for a watch over her soul. <laughs> Rise right. to the top, or get left in the dust. Greeting protocol. Welcome to the palace of the Adeptus Administratum. Identifying your ladyship. Please follow me. You got it, Scully. Don't Is there money wig. to be made? Okay, well, we have a door. Uh, this appears to be the only door we can go in, so checking coordinates. Continue in this direction to reach your destination. Your visit has been logged. Alright, well, first thing we're gonna do is loot this. Just people lying, leaving so many masterful cameos of saints and litanies of faith, consecrated scrolls and sets of icons lying around. My god, somebody's gonna take these things if you just leave them there. The towering piles of papers and endless shelves heaving with ledgers evoke special reverence for the... Laws of the God Emperor in the hearts of the servants of the Adeptus Administratum. Okay. Always More goods. Keep your eye on the prize. Up for the taking. Guess we'll give this a read. Chronicle of Case something something. This, or the parchment looks grease marked and old, as though it has passed through many, many pairs of hands. Servants of the Imperium, or Servant of the Imperium, Elias Tantanal filed a declaration within the Adeptus Administratum that he is the sole heir of House Tantanal and the legal, legal sovereign of the northern continent of the planet Ergona Rex. According to the submission, Elan, Elias Tantanal cannot exercise his right to this inheritance, as the wider family tree includes an individual who shares his full legal name. According to the petitioner, this individual is his great-grandfather. Given the loss of documents confirming the death of the second claimant to the inheritance, Elias Tantanel is petitioning for the confirmation of this relative's death and the permission for the enactment of his inheritance rights. Petitions, petition received preliminary review period up to 15 Terran cycles. Forwarded for review, 23 Terran cycles, four turns from date of submission. Request for a copy of the death certificate of Elias Tantanel sent to the archive of the Department of Minotaur. 28 Terran cycles, two turns from date of submission. Petition rejected. 39 Terran cycles, 11 turns from date of submission. Second petition sent to the archive. 44 cycles, four turns from date of submission. 
Petition approved. 52 cycles from date of submission. After 48 repeated submissions from Elias Tentanel, a second request was sent to the archive. 79 cycles. <laughs> Seven turns from the date of submission. Copy of death certificate of Elias Tantanel, great grandfather to the petitioner, received 84 Terran cycles, six turns from date of submission. Documents forwarded for the formulation of decision granting permission for the enactment of the inheritance rights of Elias Tantanel, sole heir of his house in legal sovereign of the northern continent of the planet Arcona Rex. 101 Terran cycles, five turns from date of submission. Death of Elias Tantanel recorded by servants of the Adeptus Administratum. Place of death. Q16. <laughs> oh no. Wills, legacies, and inheritances. Waiting hall. Palace of the Adeptus Administratum Dargonus. 106 Terran cycles. Two turns from date of submission. Death certificate of Alias Tantanel sent to the archive of the Department of Munitorum. 114 Terran cycles. Ten turns from the date of submission. Petition for the enactment of the inheritance rights following the death of Elias Tantanel. And for the issuance of a copy of death certificate received from the deceased's daughter, Eliana Tantanel Buxay. 114 Terran cycles. Eleven turns from the date of submission. Uh, that is, that's just, that's grimdark. <laughs> that is the bleakest thing I've ever read. <laughs> Alright, we got the Master of Seals here, yet I am seeing no seals. I am fucking gravely disappointed. I want, I want to see seals, you know, wobbling around all over the place. Keep your wits about right, what, what you. What have we here? Sacred Scroll, the 1,005 admonitions of the man, Master, Jesus. Inventory, Avas, Master of Inventory, Avasilis to the Adepts of the Administratum. Inkwell of Livalia the Impartial, First Master of Seals of the Coronus Expanse. Okay, and we have some goods here. We will be stealing these as well. Auditing and reissuance of Great Tithe Payment, documentation for GX75021 and GX76021. In the last 2,836 Terran cycles, entries mentioning planets blah blah found, including copies. Entries mentioning planet other one, one found, including copies. Okay, so we have two planets here. 75021 and 76021. One copy of 76021 and entries found for this one is uh, many, many, many. A full list... Confirmed by the Adeptus Terra of all planetary objects located within the territory of the illustrious rogue trader dynasty of Von Valencius was received 164 Terran cycles ago. After careful reconciliation of the data, it was found that planetary object GX76021 has not been included in the collection of the Imperial Tithe for the last 2,836 Terran cycles. In the same period, the planetary object GX75021 was included in the taxable sites but did not pay its Imperial Tithe, thereby failing to uphold its sacred obligations to the Imperium. Subsequent analysis of archive documentation revealed the absence of documentation confirming the existence of planetary object GX75021, unlike planetary object... GX761, which was discovered in files dated more than 2,836 cycles ago. Based on an internal inventory investigation, the Adeptus Administratum decrees that any mention of planetary object GX75021 must be replaced with GX76021. The governor of the planetary object 76021 must pay the tithe for the preceding 2,836 Terran cycles within a period of no more than 50 Terran cycles. In the event of non-payment of the tithe within the prescribed period, planetary object GX76021 will be seized for the needs of the Adeptus Administratum, and 95% of the population will be immediately subjected to servitude in perpetuous for the benefit of the Imperium. Note, a precise reckoning for the tithe amount required in Throne Gelt is appended to this report. Note, an advisory letter has been sent to the Departmento Munitorum recommending that the Department of Conduct its own internal inventory investigation to determine whether planetary object GX76021 has fulfilled its sacred obligation to provide recruits for the Astro Military. That, oh man, that's even more bleak than the other one. So, somebody misrecorded GX75021 as GX7, oh sorry, uh, uh, no, somebody misrecorded GX76021 as 75021, which caused all of the Hiding demands to go to a non-existent planet, GX75021, 
they finally realized the error, corrected it, and then charged 2,836 years <laughs> of planetary tithes <laughs> to the planet because they because the administratum fucked up. Oh, God. And then if they don't pay it, which is obviously that's not payable, 95% of the population gets lobotomized and turned into servitors. This is 40k, guys. Oh, that's terrible. An ancient-looking woman in a voluminous robe peers at you critically through her ocular lenses when you descend into the bowels of her bureaucratic domain. Another noble bypassing the queue under the pretext of just wanted to ask. All you highborn ever want is just to ask. But what about protocol? That's what I'm asking. Who is going to follow protocol? Jay glances at you and whispers. What? So I paid off a few clerks to let us skip the queue, Shireen. Your time is more important to me than any little formalities. Oh, thanks, Jay. <laughs> Very well. Don't just stand there. You're here now. Or do you think the Master of Seals has nothing better to do than receive unexpected visitors? The old woman beckons over a servo skull floating nearby. Begin entry. Current hour. Current turn. Current cycle. 41st millennium. Metal manipulators immediately begin feverishly clacking, taking dictation. Don't you know who I am? Cyrene von Valencius, sole heir of the rogue trader Theodora von Valencius, may the throne's radiance guide her path on the other side. In a practice move, the Master of Seals twists her magnifying ocular lens and examines the ledger in front of her, the sole person to publicly assert their claim, to be precise. <laughs> okay, so she knows who we are and doesn't care. I guess she's either that old and that fed up with everything that she doesn't care if, you know, her being insolent's going to get her executed, or she's that confident in her position. Abelard Worserian. The old woman directs her gaze over your shoulder. Seneschal and right hand of the now departed Theodora von Valencius. And of her now extant heir. The old woman smacks her lips in satisfaction and nods curtly. Of course I know who's standing before me. It is my job to know. Jay shifts, deliberately putting her jeweled augmentic on display. Does that mean that my reputation has preceded me as well, esteemed Damar? No, I have received no reports about you. Tell me about yourself. I am the law, and I oversee order in this section of the coroner's expense, as well as on worlds of the von Valencia's protector. In accordance with ancient covenants made by your ancestors, I hold the power to grant petitioners what they seek and to punish criminals for failing to carry out the Imperium's will. She's ancient enough herself. Look at her. She's a bona fide living mummy. <laughs> Tell me about the work of the Adeptus Administratum. One would think the Protectorate's heir has no care for her tongue if she is willing to wag it to the point of blister. However, I, despised servant of the Emperor that I am, do not possess the gift of unallocated time. Let us proceed to the matter of your application. <laughs> All right. My companion wishes to obtain a Mercatum Tabula Officiale. Jay, of course. She wants to be officially recognized. This is one of her quests. The Master of Seals peers over her ocular lenses at Jay in disbelief. Then she looks at you. I take it you are her sponsor. In that case, you must submit a written application in conformity with the template 401.01, as well as written permission for the proce processing and notarization of, personal, of the personal data of your most sacred personage. Without it... I cannot issue, Mistress. Heydari. Mistress Heydari, the form for collecting the seals required to obtain Mercatum Tabula Officiale, the certificate of an official trade representative. At these words, the saccharine smile drops from Jay's face. Seals? What seals? We will discuss that when Cyrene von Valencius has prepared the primary documentation. Abelard lets out a stoic sigh and rolls his eyes. You get the feeling that this is not the first personal interaction with the administratum bureaucracy, or that this is not his first personal interaction with the administratum bureaucracy, nor is it his second. <laughs> uh, we're not getting around the formalities, not even my will. Uh, we could bribe her. I will, I will complete. I'm going to complete application form 401.01. The perfectly sharpened quill scratches pleasantly on the parchment, but for the first few minutes, 
the obfuscatory phrasing, footnotes, amendments, you are forced to write out the same details over and over about you, the protectorate, Theodora von Valantius, J, and then also every living person who bears your family name. If you do not know all of the required information, you must complete supplementary forms. Oh god, time passed. One hour. Only one? That's I'm surprised. The Master of Seals nods in approval and stows the scroll into a tube labeled with your name. Next is the consent form for the processing and notarization of the personal data of your most sacred patronage or personage. I'm going to give my written consent. Another hour. <laughs> the scroll is whipped away into another tube by the Master of Seals. Protocol executed. Application received. Processed. Approved. The servo skull scribe taps out each word after its mistress's pronouncement. Come on, esteemed Damar. What's that you were saying about seals? The old woman unhurriedly holds out a printed scroll to Jay. It is your document, Mr. Saidari. Unfortunately, it does not yet have legal force. I can certify it as a sacred Mercata Tabulae Officiale once it has received two seals of approval. They are easy to obtain. In the Imperial Court Administration, or in the Imperium Court Administratum servitors have been handing, handling such tasks for over 150 cycles. There is one such servitor here on Dargonus in the Rogue Trader's Palace. The second is duty-bound to keep the seal in the Telecos Epsilon system. Fuck's sake, so we have to get back to Telecos Epsilon. Okay. Uh, why can the seals not be affixed here in the Administratum Palace? According to the Amendment 3C-8, or 3-C-8, implemented by Prefectus Estinia II of Dark Godus, one of the seals must be kept in the place of the ruler of the Von Valencius Protectorate, reminding a symbol of the unbreakable link between the Sacred Warrant and the Adeptus Administratum. The second seal, the ocular lens, is perched over her nose, click as she rifles through, moldering scrolls with her wrinkly, wrinkled fingers, is held at the Telecos Epsilon system in accordance with Decree OL-008-ZN. Unfortunately, after a fire 200 cycles ago, all that remains of the original decree is an addendum certified by an unknown adept with the initials AA. No instructions repealing this decree were ever received from Holy Terra. Therefore, the seal remains where it ought to be. Oh my god. There was a time during my earlier years of service when I performed the duties of a secretary in charge of logistics reports at a local administratum office. Your words, Master of Seals, bring back memories which I am not the least bit fond. <laughs> yeah. Find administratum servitors and have them place two seals of approval. The goal is clear. The Master of Seals nods with satisfaction. Please do return once you have prepared the documents. Sorry, Jay, it's going to be a little while. I always keep well, my options uh, open. Well, so we need to find a servitor here. I can do that. One of these. Ah, found it. Found what? Dusty note. Elam. I know it hasn't been even a full cycle since I was appointed, but please cover for me with the Master of Seals, for the Emperor's sake. I completely forgot about one extremely important seal. I'm going to run upstairs to do it. I don't think it will take long. I'll be back within a couple of hours. The note is covered in a thick layer of dust, just like the table at which it lies upon. Send to cargo. I like that you can send most of these notes to cargo. You can't do it with all of them for some reason, but... Let us... We have returned to the palace... Mr. Saidari, my patience is not easily exhausted, but you are coming very close. I shall repeat myself again. I will not be issuing you any seal, not in exchange for your honest word, nor for a bribe. This is the, uh, uh Abelard's granddaughter speaking, I believe. I can see the family resemblance of Abelard now. You cannot see farther than your own nose, my dear Clementia. It wasn't a bribe, it was a gift. Now about that seal. <laughs> Let the rogue trader decide.
Your ladyship, I apologize for this ugly scene, but might I ask that you rein in Mr. Sedari and put a stop to her inflammatory actions towards me? As the exalted one is my witness, Shirin, I've tried everything I could to spare you any unnecessary headache over the seals of the Mercatum Pabula Officiale. I even showed this aid, with a temper worse than the sandstorm, the certificate with your own signature. But the Chancellor merely kept batting me away with her flail of baseless denials. I suspect that the reason for this has nothing to do with my humble personage. Lamentia purses her lips and glowers at Jay. <laughs> oh no, this isn't about me at all. Jay narrows her eyes as she peers into Clementia's face until the latter finally looks away. I see. Well, Chancellor, will you tell us yourself or should I help you? Help in what way, Jay? They lost your seal, Shireen. They lost it and tried to hide the fact from both me and you. Oh, good. Hold your tongue, peddler of Xeno heresy, and speak not of things you know nothing about. Clementia's words at Jay, or cut Jay off like a swing of a saber. Then Clementia turns to you, her head lowered in shame. I beg your forgiveness, your ladyship. I should have reported this earlier, but there never was a good time. The seal Mistress Haydari is looking for was lost over a quarter of a century ago. Her ladyship, Theodora von Valencius, ordered a new one to be delivered from the Imperium, but as you well know, we are a long way from Holy Terra. And with the warp storms ravaging the Corn's expanse, we have been unable to receive a replacement to this day. I presume the one responsible was punished promptly and harshly. Rest assured, Theodora von Valencius ordered to have the malefactor dealt with accordingly. Servitude in perpetuous, your ladyship. He now performs his duties to the Imperium without reservation or error. However, she refers to her data slate, one of the worlds under Caligos Winterscale's rule, like Dargonus, was granted the honor of keeping the sacred sigils of the Administratum. The archives of House von Valencius mention three systems that are presently under the control of House Winterscale. Those would be the Forgotten Twins, Langren's Belt, and the Nameless Star. I'm confident that the Administratum Palace is located on one of the other planets there. We have a better chance of finding a seal in the pocket of some rich collector or fence than on a remote world owned by one of your rivals, Shirin. I suggest we make contact with any traders we may encounter on your travels. People in my line of work tend to have a good eye for such, for such things. There is every possibility that someone has waited their whole life to fleece or to uh, return the great relic to its rightful owner. Oh, we have one. I'm going to give Clementia the seal with the winter scale coat of arms. Could this be the seal in question? This is, without a doubt, the Administratum seal from Winterscale's realm. But why is it the original and not a copy? Ah, I think I understand. Well, the laws of the Imperium do not prohibit heirs from other houses from using the seals in times of need. I will order to have servants of the machine cult create a duplicate so as to avoid such embarrassing predicaments in the future. All right. Well, we've lost the worn seal. Yeah, we got that somewhere. I do not remember where, but uh, we did visit at least two of those star systems along the way. So I was just thinking, like, I recognize those names. Do we need to go back? As it turns out, we do not. So that's great. Now we just need to find the other one. So we're going to head up into space because unless there's something else we need to say here, let's quickly talk to Clementia, actually, while we're still here. Nothing more to say. And with Achilles Scalander, we've already discussed everything there, so I think we just need to wait until something here happens on Dargonus, right? Trade Protector quests. A new ruler. Okay, so we need to uh, complete a development project of the highest difficulty in any colony. Okay. These are the companion quests, Secrets of the Cults. So we need to go to Kiavagama. We need to go back to Telekos Epsilon. Yeah. 
Find the seal on Dargonus. And talk to the Master of Seals. So we need to find a seal on Janus. Must be kept by one of the officials there. All right. Uh, interesting. So we're going to have to go back to Janus. And, um... Oh, there is still an Anvers base here on Footfall. We'll have to go back. And we need to uh, do something on Viabo 6. Okay. So, we're going to uh, depart and uh, head back to the ship and then uh, go back out into space because it doesn't seem like there's much to do here. All right, so back in the void we are. So the first thing we should do is chart some new routes. We can, we may as well cover these two systems while we're at it and see if there's anywhere, you know, potentially, yeah, see, this is what I was thinking. Maybe we can cut our way back through here because this is going to get us to Telecos Epsilon way quicker than going all the way around there. Um, but we do have two potential routes up here. We have Mortis Asius, Forge a Path to Viabo 6, and save the Eldari survivors, which we can actually do up here as well, interestingly enough. This is also save Eldari survivors. Intriguing. However, this isn't actually getting our new uh, route all the way up to there. We can go down here, and I think that's what we're going to do. However, I will be making this one... A just regular unsafe route. So otherwise this is going to get rough. The steady rhythm of life aboard the vessel was disrupted when, on the fourth watch of the voyage, the lower decks had their gravity reversed. Oh, that sucks. The stunned denizens of the afflicted sectors were woken up by being torn from their assigned beds and tossed onto the ceiling. Numerous injuries and fatalities were reported. The difficulties in performing regular duties due to the gravity reversal continued until the end of the journey. After the ship exited the warp, the gravity returned to the accepted norm, an event that once again was accompanied by deaths and injuries among the crew. <laughs> Thanks, warp. It was real nice. So, enemies of humanity. Oh, those are chaos ships. And by the looks of them, cruisers? Let's avoid them for now. So we got here a rocky planet of some variety. We have more phlogiston, only two. We have currently ten phlogiston available to us. So I'm going to ignore that for now. That looks like a potentially interesting planet, though. This is a gas giant. I don't think we're going to get much out of here. Usually we don't. Maybe some fuel. Or absolutely nothing at all. But what about up here? This one looks, uh, looks like something. An ocean planet? Ice world, even. Prometheum. Six Prometheum. How much do we currently have? We have six. I'm going to build another extractor here. I'm going to have 12. That is uh, a good amount of Prometheum. Okay. And then this, I have absolutely no idea what this might be. This might be an ocean planet or a tropical island planet. It is just an ocean planet with no resources. Okay, let's engage these uh, chaos ships. A wave of angry whispers passes over the bridge as the arch enemy's minions train their weapons on you and prepare to attack. Death to the heretics for the glory of the emperor! It's our duty to, you know, take out heretic fleets. Chaos fleets. What are we going to be fighting here? Hopefully not anything too large. Cool arch of our ship emerging from the uh, warp. This gains of fate can lead us to victory. So, what have we here? Oh god, that's a murder class cruiser. An, an infidel class raider. So infidels, if they're going off of what I understand still, like old school Battlefleet Gothic, infidel class are going to be torpedo ships. And a murder class... Uh, was a murder class a lance ship? I'm not sure. I don't really remember. I think it was a lance ship. But, uh, I think that's gonna be our main target. Priority target here. So we're gonna go straight at it. K 
Okay. Didn't like that. We could advance further, but that's going to be it. Or we can do... Yeah, I will do a quick advance right here. We're going to do an arc augury to get ourselves a bit of extra range so that I can actually target it with uh, our guns right here, which is going to further chunk its uh, shields a little. Then we've got our dorsal cannons. We're going to do the exact same thing here. Okay, so we've done a little bit of damage to it, but this is a, uh, a, a chunky boy, unfortunately. Um, so nothing more to be done. Our other weapons are not in range. I am a little bit concerned. It doesn't appear like they're launching torpedoes. Oh, it's a carrier! Man. Okay. It didn't do that much. Swift Death Fighters. Can we get... Can we get, uh, like... Carrier weapons? Like, is that a, is that a thing we can do? That would be really cool. Okay, swing run. I don't think we want to do that. At least, not yet. We have weapons that can be used right now. I could pick this thing off? No, I cannot. Um, we've got to do some damage to this, this fucking thing. So, our prow weapons are going to unleash everything they have on the murder class. I can't target it unless I move. Okay, dorsal weapons. Open up. So we've done a bit of work, but not that much. We do have some broadsides that can be used, so that's doing all right. We can ram. We don't want to ram this thing. That's just not going to work. We can ram the fighters, though. Will that work? The enemy shield, shield is down. Fireless. Time to unleash a counterattack. Ooh, that hurt. Okay, that was painful. But I think we can kill it. Already Down dead? it goes. Pathetic, and we dealt a ton of damage to the other one. <laughs> we can do a shallow warp jump and get out of here. So, where, what's the situation on our shields? 23 there, nothing on this side. We could die. So, we're going to restart our shields on this side, and then I want to do a... Uh, an emergency or a shallow warp jump. <laughs> so we just rammed the cruiser. Okay, so it's swinging around. This one's gonna be able to shoot us, unfortunately. One more hit and oh, we we'll finish. That was close. Oh god, and it just launched torpedoes. We are in deep doo doo. All right. Uh, <laughs> new heading. Or do we do a swing run? Spin her around. New heading would allow us to bring our uh, broadsides to bear, whereas the swing run will not. I'm going to do new heading. So, we go right here. So we got to take this one out. Okay, we can also do some damage on the swift death fighters. Fortunately, our uh, dorsal weapons are just out of arc. Ah, shit. So if we go here... Probably should have gone the other way. Ah, uh, we're well, yeah, just out of range, but thankfully I have Arc Augury off of cooldown. So, we can uh, shoot our broadsides right here. Goodbye. It's one gone. Our dorsal weapons we can take some pot shots at the Swift Death Fighters. We may as well. It's one of them gone. And, uh,. Oh boy. I'm going to restart the shields. If we take any damage right now, we're dead. Okay, thankfully, nothing's not going to be able to... Yes, it will. No, it will not. that thing's not going to be able to attack. Oh my god, we are incredibly lucky. So, put some damage on the cruiser. Or the raider. 
So it is the torpedo ship, the uh, infidels, so. That was indeed correct. Now let's kill it. Goodbye. Okay. So what we could then do is do our swing run here, which would turn us around. Okay. So our weapons are operating on reduced range right now. Unfortunate. What can you do? What's our shield situation? We are about to take a hit from one side here. There's no shields there, so I, I'm going to reinforce our prow. Oh, we have to uh, move, huh? Then I'm going to move this way. Then I should not have reinforced the prow. Unfortunate. Okay, let's try that one again. <laughs> that was, uh... That was a hard fight. The more we can take out from this thing, the better. Because, uh, it's a carrier, apparently. I don't recall this thing being a carrier. Maybe it is just has a couple of, like, options. It's not necessarily a designated carrier. It's possible that it just, you know, can function as a carrier. So we're gonna going to uh, go in real close, basically get our right up in its grill. Do as much damage as we can with our uh, weapons here. Okay, it did not like that. What I will do is reinforce the prow shields. Because we're about to take some shit from the front here. All right, the infidels are advancing. Okay, they're coming in quick. With Death Fighters on approach. Okay, we are taking a little bit of damage, which is most unpleasant. So, our options are, well, utilizing a whole lot of DACA. Then I would like to move it so that my crowd shields are not facing the enemy. So, can I take this one out? No. I think we just need to focus as much damage as possible on the uh, murder class. So, we'll use our, our batteries first to just strip away the shields, and we'll see what we can do. Okay, the shields are basically done. Another lance shot here. Very nice. Then we come up right up alongside it, here in the prow. We can point blank broadside it. That might even do it. Ooh, so close. Okay. Barrel us through, get us behind the enemy. Okay. I can emergency, or I can do a shallow warp jump to get even more distance. Perfect. I don't think we're going to get shot at. Okay, so far this is going a lot better. As it turns out, maybe ramming a much bigger ship <laughs> with a smaller ship was not a very good idea. In my defense, I was trying to ram the fighter. I don't like the looks of that. Boy. What's going on here? What, what's... We're suffering a lot of internal fires from the murder class cruiser. Ouch. Okay, new heading. This just may make its next turn. Okay, so this does not apply for the entire duration of turning. It's just like your next maneuver that you do. So if I stop and then start shooting, we don't get that benefit anymore. So it's possible that I might be better off doing a swing run here just to get out of range. Or I can still try this. Get up into somebody's grill. I think I'm going to actually do the new heading. Just fly us straight here. Actually, it's too late now. All right, it's fine. So, we have this side facing the enemy. That is not super ideal. But we can get some damage done on the swift death. Fighters, probably. One, one hit on them. We can get a little bit more. Okay, another one down. Our lance is in range, and hopefully we can just snipe this guy. He's still alive. That makes me sad. Well, let's use our arc 
Augury. Ah, we're still out of range. Shit. Okay, that was foolish. Okay, so he's coming around this side. That's fine. Our shields are at maximum power right there, so he can do whatever the hell he wants to us. And we should be okay. This thing is almost dead. One more hit to its prow, and it's nicely conveniently pointing its prow towards us. The problem is it's going to be able to do some work against us. Are we taking it to our flank? We are. That is not ideal. God. We need to turn the tide. Okay. Next attempt. <laughs> Third time's the charm, right? So. Putting us right here. Slightly different angle to it. We can still shoot it with all of our weapons. But I'm actually going to order our weapon attacks slightly differently. So we are going to use the Augur Array right now so that I can try and get some work done on its prow shield initially. And then shoot it with my lances. I don't know if that's going to make a difference, but in case it does... Okay. We've done a tiny bit of damage to it. It's really not much. <laughs> it's really not much at all. That there is an option. So we can immediately broadside it as well. I think. No, we cannot. Yes, we can. Okay. Well, that did almost nothing. Let's uh, reinforce our... I don't know what, where we're going to get hit from. I think we're going to get hit from the front. So we're going to reinforce our prow shields. Okay. And uh, fighters. Everyone committed to madness. Okay. So, um, we do have our broadsides in position to do some damage. We're definitely going to do exactly that. Nice, we got a bit of work done there. Prow batteries, I'm sorry, uh, dorsal batteries are going to open fire. Our prow batteries can then open fire. Smite the enemies We're of doing humanity. some serious work here. And our main lance batteries are going to fire. That did some damage. Not going to lie. And then we can go around this way. We have this weapon. So if we were to, say, do a new heading, and then just, like, do a wild-ass spin right here. Hold on, this might just work. So, look at that. Come about face. Unleash our fire from this side. So close! <laughs> okay, so we need to... I don't know what side we need to deflect against. I, I think I'm going to reinforce this side of my void shields. Uh, do we want to restart our shields? Initiates the process of restarting the shields. The shields will be restored at the start of the flagship's next turn. No, we do not want to do that right now. Oh, the ship must reach. Um, yeah. Go there. Okay, melted torpedoes are flying in. They don't friendly fire. Oh, God. Can you not... Another hit, and we will be drowning in the void. So those go really far. I think we're dead. Yeah. New plan. I'm gonna pick up the escorts first. The reason why I didn't do it before is because you kind of have to go through the, the murder class in order to get to the escorts. But there's other ways of doing this. Or I should say, there's other ways we can do this. So we're going to do another emergency warp jump. That's hopefully going to keep us out of range of that one. We can already start shooting this escort. And this is going to increase the range by two, which is just barely going to be not enough. But our dorsal weapon can at least start firing at the Citadel, so... We gotta take these down. These guys hit really hard. And for the sake of things, I'm going to already reinforce this shield. Because this is something I think you can just do every turn. Okay. <laughs> Alright, they're gonna attack. 
attack the prowl apparently. And they're gonna shoot torpedoes. Okay, those torpedoes are a little bit inopportunely spaced for me, because I'm probably gonna run into them. I don't know how quick the torpedoes can turn. Because we cannot outrun this thing. Ow. Okay. It's alright. Now it's gonna launch fighters. And it's going to shoot all manner of shit at us, so we're on fire. Swift death fighters are coming in. So our rear shields are not looking too good. Oh my god. So, about that, attack the escorts first. Not so sure about that now. Hopefully this doesn't trigger a detonation. No. Kill it. Alright, it's one gone. Then I can swing around. And get behind it. Gonna put us in an uh, inopportune position for the other one, but that's okay. At least the torpedoes won't be following us. But all we gotta do is win. Um, I could have maneuvered that a little bit differently, to be fair. I think we gotta reinforce our prow now. I'm gonna restart the shields. It's gonna slow us down next turn, but. Let's see what happens. Okay, torpedoes. Still shooting at us, but it's gonna hit our prow. Double your it is not gonna hit our prow. Stains. Okay. Sometimes that's a little bit unclear. We, we've gotten close. So, I think my best course of action is to take out the cruiser first. That's where I've had the best fortune thus far. Just we got clipped by those torpedoes the last time. We were doing pretty good otherwise. And the first time we were doing quite well as well. Okay, so we need to advance further. Get ourselves into range here. We cannot shoot that apparently. Uh, why? I am a bit confused as to what happened there, but whatever. Okay, a little bit of damage. We could move ourselves a bit, but let's not. Let's drop a uh, reinforced shield right up here. I'll save my... Uh... I'll jump for another moment. Either way, we gotta deal with at least one of the infidels. Okay, it's sending torpedoes. The other one I'm gonna send torpedoes to. But this guy is going to do something. Shoot us with a lance. Oh my god. How's our shield looking? Still intact. Okay. Not bad. Not bad at all. I'll take it. Put our fire in here. Good. We broke their shield, Lord Captain. We certainly did. I would love to be able to, uh... Problem is, if I go this way, we are getting tagged by those torpedoes, 100%. So what I think I'd rather do is fly up here and then warp right past them. I'm gonna ignore the cruiser for a sec. We'll deal with them if I can. Right now, that's not on the menu. So I'm going up this way. They can't shoot, that's fine. So, I uh, gotta, gotta get a little closer, huh? Fuck. Okay, we're not gonna be able to uh, shoot both, so. Probably. So if I go here and then, actually we can do this and then do the uh, the warp, the shallow jump. Because that, that'll send us directly through them, so it'll be fine. Get some more shots on the infidel here. Okay, beautiful. Nothing to be done there, so we are going to now do a shallow jump. And get right behind him. <laughs> Hopefully the torpedoes can't do a, uh, a wild 180. Let's uh, armor or shield up our rear here. Okay, it does not seem like they have the greatest of turning radiuses. They go far, to be sure. Okay. And, uh, okay, can't shoot us. They, their weapons are quite short range. 
right now one of them is basically out of the picture. I think the fighters are also out of the picture. This weapon, okay, it just seems to be able to hit me from anywhere. Um, which is... Intimidating. I'm gonna use Arc Augury. So I can, uh, get some work done on this one from here. Fantastic. And then we can, uh, we can swing around. The problem is if we swing around here, those torpedoes are gonna swing around there. I'd rather not have that happen. So what we're going to do instead, I can do a swing run. I think we're better off actually doing the new heading. And then going a really hard turn right here. Let's go all the way around. Beautiful. Okay, so our more defended sides are now showing against the enemy. We can't target them with most of our weapons. I can, however, put some shots onto the cruiser here, but I think I'd rather put some shots onto the Swift Death Fighters with our, our dorsal... It's a lance, though. Um, maybe I should put, put a shot onto it. That's not going to do much. That's the problem. So we're hitting the side here, so... I don't know. We're taking his shields down, I guess. Okay. Shields are down to 18. Um, our batteries here can't do anything. Let's reinforce the prow. We'll take some shots from the side, that's okay. But I'm mostly worried about what we're going to take from the prow here. These torpedoes, I think, are no longer a problem. Let's hope the other one doesn't shoot torpedoes. Probably will. Or this one shoots more torpedoes. Oh good. It shot torpedoes. And we got more of this shit coming at us. However, I think we can handle it. Yeah. Okay, the Swift Death Fighters are certainly annoying. No question there. We have our Starbreaker Lance. Starbreaker Lance can already get some work done on the murder class here. So, good damage. Very good. And the Mazoa Lance is also going to get some work done on it. It is almost dead. So if I swing right up along here... What's the... I really wish we could see the range on the torpedoes. <laughs> Just out of arc. Okay, what I can do... So if we fly in close... No, that's going to put us way too close. If we go there, I think we can dodge them. I, I really hope. And then we can kill this thing. At least get this one out of the way. Where we tread the unfaithful fall. Okay. That's uh that's clutch. And armor up this side here. I think we're still gonna get hit by the torpedoes. I'm just gonna hope that the uh, the shields are gonna do enough. <laughs> we at least have some health. Okay, that one's gone. Oh, we were able to dodge them. Oh, okay. We're okay. I think we got this. We gotta pick off these ships. Okay, their guns are just ignoring my shields. What type of weapons do you have? Macro batteries. You sh shouldn't ignore shields. Interestingly enough, it, it just ignored my shield completely. Not sure how I feel about that. All right. Get some damage in there. Uh, we have our dorsal one as well. We'll do a little bit of work right there as well. Um, and then what we can do is swing around. Set the right course. That doesn't seem wise. Um, swing around. Avoid the fighters. I don't. I guess the fighters we also have to kill. I don't suppose they're. Uh, Can we get range on anything here? We cannot, so what I'm going to do is... Restart the shields again. And then, uh... Good emergency warp jump, get a little farther away, but that's gonna actually bring us closer to the fighters, so let's not. The infidel's pulling this way, it's gonna shoot more torpedoes, shit. Where 
these ones, these ones are way around here. Flying with its torpedoes, which is actually kind of smart. Okay. Please die. I'm not dead yet. That's okay. So we fly over here. Now I can do the shallow warp jump. Put ourselves in a pretty good position. Uh, we are just out of range. Okay. Fine. We'll get in range. Is there macro batteries? Beautiful. Goodbye. And just to be sure those torpedoes don't tag us, we are going for shallow warp jump right up there. And, uh, well, since I've got extra cannon slots or cannon uh, shots, I'm going to at least take some of these out. All right. So those melted torpedoes are just going to... Uh, basically fizzle out. We got this. All we gotta do is pick this last uh, infidel off without blundering into these. We should be fine. Okay, where are you going? Okay, these are gone? Great. Okay. We're gonna use Abelard's ability, new heading. Hello. Let's go right here. <laughs> Just out of range. That's okay. Who's gonna come close? This torpedo should be gone next turn. Where are you going? And in this way? I think he's now in range. He's shooting more torpedoes. That's uh, not very nice. Okay. Uh, so we'll just go past him. We'll go right up here first so that we can use our prow weapons. That we can't. So, now we can use our prow weapons and kill him. Goodbye. We'll go up here. And just to be very, very sure, I'm going to use my shallow warp jump again. This is a great ability, by the way. And, uh... We'll just wait for the torpedoes to die on their own. Ah, we did that! It took us half of our health and multiple tries. But it worked. We took out a murder-class cruiser. With two uh, escorts. My premonitions never fail me. And not the crappy dinky escorts either. These are like proper big escorts. Okay, two dark halos and 11 unholy amulets. And we have ourselves a Jovian pattern class 2 drive. That's going to uh, increase our speed and give us 107 scrap. Which is probably we're going to use all of to repair our ship. <laughs> Considering uh, the damage we took. Let's check that. How much scrap does this take to repair? Hull repair, 91. Okay, so we did actually make some scrap. We are going to plug in the Jovian pattern engine. Does this look different? Oh, it's, a, it's the same type. It's the same pattern, so probably not. Alright, we'll throw this into there. We can upgrade our RAM. I don't know if we need to do that. I think I'm going to hold on to... Uh... We didn't level up. I am... Sad. Alright, we'll check out this system here. You know, scan... And there is nothing to be found, so we are then, in that case, going to uh, probably head back into the warp and uh, see what there is to be found out there. So it's a lovely place, the warp. So. We have made it through the crossroad of 100 dreams. That was a, uh, a fun little area. So let's chart some new routes. Hopefully this will open up three new ones. No, it will not. We have the Pillars of Viridis. Eurydice, probably. Going, uh, probably Greek. And the Orselio Prophecy. Then we can get to Telecos Epsilon. And finish up our business there. Let's do that, and then we can try and swing up that way later. We're gonna head down to Orselio Prophecy. Alright, let's check this out. What have we here? Oh look, pirates. Okay, um... Well, let's go into the space dust. See what there is to find. Trophies. Okay. Oh, fuel. Um, and then we have what looks like a desert planet. Could be something else. No, actually it doesn't look anything like a desert planet is a jungle planet. That is, in fact, the opposite of a desert planet. It appears that a large void ship recently dumped a huge load of junk and has 
and faulty parts from orbit. The debris that did not burn up in the atmosphere is now blocking the flow of a mighty river. This dam is causing the river to overflow, flooding it, the nearby valley. A herd of large hoofed rodents has gathered along the riverbanks. If the animals lose their usual habitat, they are doomed. Okay, so we could rescue... The Lord Captain declares a great hunt. Or we can save the animals. This is awfully, like, environmentally friendly for Warhammer 40k. Maybe we'll even find some stuff in the space debris. Let's do that. Let's, uh... Lord Captain orders a removal of the space debris from the riverbed. Oh, it's from the riverbed, specifically. It's a long and laborious process, but the animals have a chance to survive. It takes many planetary turns and hundreds of crew members to remove the heaps of trash and unclog the river, letting the waters flow freely once more. The rodents run back to their pastures without so much as a backward glance at the people who saved them. You know, at least we, uh, we got the eccentric animal lover. Or at least that popped up on the screen. And it made me feel good about myself, okay? Think of them. They're, they're large river... Near river dwelling rodents, these sound like capybaras. And would you ever want to be mean to capybaras? Like, capybaras are just the chillest animals in the world. You know, they'll find like a video of a, a pelican trying to eat a capybara's head. And the capybara is just sitting there, not reacting, while the pelican's gnawing on its head. It's just like, why are you doing this, pelican? You can clearly see that you're not getting the reaction out of me that you so desire with your nefarious bird ways. <laughs> Eh, well, this, uh, not much for us. Another space battle, though. Kill some pirates? We can do that. So, let's see here. Pirates. It's probably not going to be as bad as the murder-class cruiser. The Emperor is on our side! Two... One Faustian class frigate. You know what? I think we can handle one Faustian class frigate. Got some torpedoes at me. What a jerk. Well, we can lance it from the start. We can also use our arc augury. Get a little bit of extra range. Soften it up with our other guns first. Let's see what kind of damage we can do. Oh, we're hitting the side. I am confused about the angles of hitting here, because this seems like it would be a prow hit, but apparently not. But that's fine. We're gonna fly on this side in a second, anyways. And then we can uh, exploit the damage we've already done here even better. So I'm okay with this. We're gonna come right on by to a point blank broadside. I'm sure, they'll be real thrilled with this. Breach in our enemy's defenses! They are damn near dead. Well, uh, hold on here. Can we finagle this? in a way that we can move back to here. Uh, you know what? I think we can. No, I don't think we can. So I want to use this gun. I don't think this is going to work. Maybe if we go right here, turn it around. Oh, we can shoot the torpedoes. <laughs> and at the very least, he's not shooting uh, any parts of our ship that... Uh, are at risk. So, I'm going to uh, reinforce the wrong side of the ship. Cool. <laughs> Whoops. I think we'll be fine. He's trying to disengage, so I don't think he's going to be shooting at us. And we are, of course, not going to let him disengage. Oh, we still have to move, do we? Okay. We always have to move. Alright, plasma torpedoes are going to do plasma torpedo things. Falchion is in full retreat. I don't think it's going to matter much. So, we can just... Swing on by right here. This is a little risky, if I do say so myself, but it's okay. As long as we don't have a direct impact, everything should be just fine. So, just out of arc there. That's unfortunate, but it is, unfortunately for it, showing the part of itself that has no shields. No so, actions. goodbye. What a shame. Now, in case these torpedoes get any funny ideas, we're going to shallow jump over here. Before our Alright, ancient avoid. machinery, some energy cores, and I think we just leveled our ship up, so. 
Good stuff. No new gear for our ship? That's fine. Let's check that. We can indeed upgrade. So, we've got a couple of new options here. So this would allow us, with Expeditious Reload, to get more macro cannon shots. What's shield pose? Overloads the shields to disrupt the enemy's defenses. If the enemy has shields there, are moved to the opposite side from where the attack hits. If the enemy has a hollow field, it loses several of its charges. The pulse can also negatively impact other Xenos technology. It's within a 5-cell radius, so it is close range. I've heard, uh, yeah, some of you were commenting that uh, that's a pretty good ability against the Eldar uh, with hollow fields. And, yeah, it does seem like it would be good. Then you do need to get close. And I'm personally one for maximum maneuverability, so I'm actually I'm going to take strafe here. Uh, I'm going to take strafe so that we can do a little bit of a, uh, a short slide, basically a sideways slide. Um, so that's a way to give ourselves a little bit of extra range or to better evade a potential like you know you can use that to get out of a, a path. Or we might be forced to uh, drop into a torpedo or something. Ultimate post abilities. Okay. Excuse me. What do we have here? Um, all hands on deck. The flagship's torpedo tubes are loaded with three torpedo salvos instead of one. Okay. We don't use torpedoes, so I think we can ignore that. We might later, but right now I like the lances. Boarding party. The flagship launches a boarding party to infiltrate an enemy ship, starting internal fires and possibly causing engine damage that cripples the ship for one round. It can only be used once per round. Um, duration, plus one round for every ten points in the Supreme Commander's Persuasion skill. Uh, we're the Supreme Commander, and we have a pretty good Persuasion skill, so boarding party might be a great one. Corpuscari chance. Okay, it seems like the, yeah, the, the skills are going to be... Good, no matter where you send them. All right, Corpus Gari Chant. At the end of each turn, the most damaged sector of the flagship shields restores 50% of its strength. That's pretty good. In Pyrian Storm, the flagship makes seven attacks, each of which targets a random enemy in an eight-cell range and deals eight to 14 warp damage. <laughs> uh, these are These sound really cool. These all sound really cool. Maximum Overdrive. Until the end of combat, the flagship's speed is increased by two and its maneuverability is increased by one. The bonus damage dealt by void ship ram is in, uh, based on the distance traveled is increased by 100%. Oh, wow. So, lots of potential ram damage. And the flagship's augers scan the area for favored tactical positions. While the flagship is in such a position, it's a... Okay, this, this is sort of like a grand strategy, so you need to move to a specific area. That seems like it's going to limit what you can do here. I... Mm, it's kind of in between these two. I'm going to take Corpus Gari Chant. That sounds really cool. Alright. Ultimate abilities. Your ship now has access to an ultimate ability that can drastically change the type of battle. Yeah? Okay. Ultimate abilities are so powerful that they take significantly longer time to recharge. When using ultimate abilities, be aware that they may still be on cooldown the next time you enter battle. Okay. The ship's ultimate cooldown bar gradually fills up on each of your flagship's turn in combat and at the end of each battle, and as a result of certain events during space exploration. Okay, so this is like an in-between battles type of cooldown. Alright, that's good to know. So we'll, uh, we'll check out this last planet right here. I'll begin my, uh, my scan. What have we here? Promethium. Five Promethium. We have 13 Promethium. I don't think we need more. Well, it's, it's not a bad amount of Promethium, but I don't think we need that much Promethium. And uh, that, everybody, is going to be where I'm going to call today's episode. We did some more exploration. We did some nice Void Combat. We uh, we queued up in the Administratum. Or we didn't queue up in the Administratum lines. We, uh, we cut the lines thanks to Jay. Although it was also for Jay, so... I don't think we need to thank her either. This was uh, for her own benefit, mostly. But, uh, yeah, that was fun. That, uh, that fight against the, uh, the cruiser, the murder class cruiser, was pretty cool. Hard. Hard with our current setup. That's probably a higher level fight. Um, might be indicative of uh, some of the worlds that 
we might see out there. But it might get a bit more rough the further out we go. So perhaps we should be exploring the worlds that are closer by for now. Which we'll do. We're going to head back to uh, Janus, see if we can't find that seal, and then sort out Jay's business. And then head to Vavos, Vabor, whatever, to sort out uh, our Dargonus's governor's problem. And uh, we'll see exactly how well we sort that out for him. I don't trust him. I don't particularly like him. Um, Drive Stem, that was his name. Uh, we'll see if we can't uh, undercut him a little bit to uh, weaken his family's power. So they're uh, definitely a threat. Anyways, that's going to be all. Drop this video a like if you've enjoyed it, and I will catch you in the next one. Ash Herder out, and the Emperor protects.